part two. So, hello. Uh, I'm working through some of these Feynman lecture series problems uh, on Caltech's website. And I've already started this one and I didn't get it. So, you know, of course, it was just sitting there bothering me and I've been thinking about it. And I don't know the solution. I didn't, I didn't figure it out, but I did figure out a new thing to do. So, this is, is a, these are the, the problems that are listed on the Caltech website and they post solutions. I did not look at the solution, okay? Um, I tried to uh, model them. So the, here's the question. I should show you the question. So in this case, the question is, there's this uh, wire in the shape of a parabola. Some people call that parabola, but I like to say parabola. And the wire is accelerating that way, and there's a bead without friction on there that, that moves up and down. Uh, it's an accelerometer. So basically where that thing is, it tells you the acceleration. But the, but the question asks here, <clears throat> the wire is accelerated at a constant uh, parallel to the wire A, and then the bead's released. And the question isn't where does the bead uh, at equilibrium. The question is, uh, what's the maximum horizontal displacement to the wire? And so then I was thinking about that. I was thinking, you know, you can't solve this with Python, and I can't solve with Python because I made a mistake. I, I will include that link. All my solutions are in the playlist down below. But I was thinking, you know, what's special about, so imagine this. Imagine this is accelerating. I'll release it from rest. First of all, in the reference frame of the wire, we can add a fake force because of the acceleration. So uh, if we want to be in this reference frame, there'd be a, a force equal to mass of the bead times that acceleration in this direction. That's one of the ways to deal with uh, accelerating frames. But what would be true about the highest point? So let's say it, it's right up here. What's true right there? And I was thinking, what, what could you do at that highest point that would tell you something about the motion? And I will say also that this is actually, uh, you could do this problem in uh, Lagrangian mechanics, but this is not Lagrangian mechanics. Um, so, but, but what's true about that point? And I was thinking, well, if, if this goes up here, it's going to get to here and it's going to stop. And I thought, stop? What do I think about when I think stop? I think the highest point. I think, what about if I treat this in terms of energy? And that's what I'm going to do right now. Okay, so let's, let's treat this as a work energy problem where the bead starts right here and it goes up here and then it, it oscillates. But I don't care. I want to find the highest point. So I don't need to do this in Python. Now, I'd like to check my, I'd like to fix my Python program. I think it should still work. Um... But, but I'm going to do it, I'm now thinking about Python. Uh, so in that case, uh, if in this system, I actually have two potential energy functions. So I can make a potential energy function from the gravitational force, and we've, we've done that, mgy would be a potential energy. And we can define a potential uh, in, in the x direction, too, based on this acceleration, and that's what I need to do. Okay, so let's jump into this. So if you remember the work energy principle says this, work is the change in energy. Now for some forces like the gravitational force, if I go from point one to point two, uh, let's go like this. I go from let's say here to there, one to two. It turns out that the path doesn't matter. So uh, I can say the work done by gravity is going to be the integral from point one to point two of mg dot uh, dr, where that's the a path. There's a path integral, but there, since the force only depends on the x direction, uh, then I only the only thing I get is this. The work done by gravity would be equal, going from one to two would be mg delta y, the change in y. Now, since that does not depend on path, I can actually move this to the other side of the equation and not do work done by gravity, but instead include it as, as an energy. So I get delta U is going to be negative mg delta Y. Because I just moved it to the other side, and I'm calling that the change in gravitational potential energy. Now, if I have this fake force this way, F fake equals... Uh, negative m a frame or i could just say in the x direction negative m a um, 
No, this should be positive. Oh, I went down. Okay. That's so this would be the work done delta y is negative. So uh, actually that I think that's fine, but in general we would say u is m g y. So that's u gravity. So u fake, the fake gravitational force is gonna be m g. Oh, I actually have to integrate. That's a constant. Okay, so let's just do this. Let's, let's say that I have uh, this. And I'm going from uh, x equals 0 to uh, x prime, some new x. And I want to calculate the work done by the fake force. It's going to be equal to the integral from 0 to x prime of the acceleration force, which is in the negative x direction, so negative m a f dx. Yeah, that's it. Oh, so it's simple. So u f, that's constant too, is going to be just m, if once to move to the other side, m a f x. So I have two potentials. I have the potential, the fake acceleration potential, and then the gravitational potential. <clears throat> okay. So now let's find out how high it goes. So now I can say this. My system is my bead plus uh, fake force plus the earth so that I have gravitational potential in, in there. So now I can say work equals zero equals delta k plus delta uf plus delta ug. Yeah. So I know this, we can write this as zero equals k2 minus k1 plus uf2 minus uf1 plus ug2 minus ug1. So one is at the origin. Uh, but if I release it from rest and it starts at rest, both of these terms are zero. So I get zero U2F. That's going to be its final fake potential energy. So that's going to be equal to uh, MAFX2, the final exposition. The initial fake potential is zero, right? Because it's at X equals zero. Yeah, so that's zero. And then the final gravitational potential energy is going to be plus uh, M g y and the initial potential is zero if i set y is equal to zero there and so those two are zero now uh, i want to find out the value of x2 well i actually know y equals k x squared right that's the uh, relationship between x and y because it has to stay on the path so i can put that in there and i get zero equals m a f x2 plus m g k x2 squared. And I want to solve for the value of x2. So I'm going to just uh, divide both sides by x2 and I get m g k x2 equals negative m a f x2 equals negative m a f over m g K. And the mass is canceled, so I get negative AF over GK. Okay, so let's check this out, okay? First of all, what, first of all, it's a negative number. That makes sense. Next, um, what if the, the acceleration is zero? What if the, the thing does not accelerate? Well, it wouldn't go anywhere, and so the maximum displacement would be zero. So if AF is zero, X is zero. I like that. What about units? So this has meters per second squared divided by meters per second squared. So then I have one over K. Now K has to have units of one over meters, right? Because if this is in meters and that's in meters, this would be one over meters times meters squared gives you meters. So then if I have one over one over meters, I get meters. So that's good. Um, okay. So I think that's the answer. It's way easier than 
what I did. Now, I still would like to go back and fix my Python program because I feel I feel like that should work. Um, but this was more of a trick solution. Uh, and here, the key trick, there's two key tricks. Number one is using this fake force. Uh, number two is making a fake potential from that fake force. Assuming it's conservative, I didn't check, but that, that fake force is constant. So you can imagine in your own head that it would be a constant. I'm, I'm really kind of happy that I solved this, and this is, I'm sure, what they intended uh, to do. But like I said, I want to go back and do my other method. I actually didn't even post that video because like, I'm going to post this and someone's going to say, aha, you, you made a mistake. So that's that. Um, okay. So I think I might, I'm not sure if I'll get that other program to work. I might switch to the next uh, problem, but, but anyway, that's my thing. So the link to the uh, Caltech site with all the problems is down below. Uh, the playlist uh, for all of the the videos, solutions I've made for this series is down below. Um, definitely, and I'm going to put a link to my, my part one, and then I'll put this in as a link to part two. So, okay, I'll talk to you later.